Hello everybody, this is Cody Made Easy coming to you with your next Allegro HD tutorial and this tutorial will be based on keyboard input. I um, Above you are going to see that it says keyboard input part 1 but don't worry the part 2 and part 3 won't be coming for a long while. The next tutorial will, based, will, be, will be based on graphics because I know you guys really want to get into graphics. Um, when the keyboard um, tutorials come back, you'll get a part 2 and part 3 series um, explaining uh, deeper in depth um, what more the keyboard can do. And then we'll be getting into gamepad input and etc. etc. Anyways, let's get into this tutorial. So you're going to see that there's a lot of stuff here, but they're from the previous tutorials. Um, there's one thing that has changed that I've added a new color. You can copy this or add a new color of your own. The basic initialize function are the same. Make sure you in have the keyboard installed or this program will not run, will not function properly. Now we have a lot of different things here. Uh, let's start from the bottom. Uh, we've deleted the draw string and added something called word2. It's a string type and right here is just my brother's YouTube channel. He does music etc. Check him out. And the uh, second one, or actual first word, is um, my website. And we're going to be displaying these using the text out ex command and basically moving them using the arrow keys and the WASD keys. Okay? The move speed is the speed at which we're going to be moving these words at. Now, the position will store the position, the current position of the words so they know where to draw it on the screen. Now you're probably saying, why couldn't I do int, sorry, uh, well you could use int or float, but for, for these tutorials I'm going to be using int to better understand it. For other um, things such as like uh, C sharp and X and SFML, most likely you'll be using float for movement, but you can get, we'll get into that later. So you might be asking, why not put, do X? A y x2 and y2 um store the x and y for the first uh for the first word and x2 and y2 for the second word we could do that but i'm going to teach you a method to handle the positions in an array so then when you come to storing a lot of different positions then you'll be able to handle it better say you had a hundred different enemies right are you going to do this int x um y x2, y2, x3, y3, x4, y4, etc, etc. You're not going to do that. Arrays are there for a reason. And in, in that case, I would more likely use vectors, but vectors are more in an advanced subject. So for right now, we're going to be talking about arrays. So for right now, we know that we have two players, so I set the first cell to two. The first cell is going to be determining the actual player number that we're navigating, which the the player number that we're operating, and the second cell is going to calculate the actual coordinates. Since we're doing 2D programming, then it only has two coordinates, the x and y. When this is set to zero, when when we use when this is set to zero, then we're talking about the x coordinate. When it's set to one, then we're talking about the y coordinate. And if you're kind of confused. Uh, if you haven't learned about arrays, then arrays start from zero and count up, right? So since there's two elements, then you would use the values zero and one. And if this is still confusing to you, then go back and learn about arrays and then come back. Basically, the initialization here, this is basically stating, uh, right here, this is basically stating um, position zero, zero. Uh, the second one is position uh, 0, 1. The third one is um, representing position 1, 0. And the last one's um, stating position 1, 1. Right? So this is calculating for the first player, and this is calculating for the second player. And you'll learn more about this after. Okay, so now let's go down to actually learning about keyboard input in your programs. Well, Allegro has built in uh, a, a basically a key array that basically 
returns um if it it has it has a, it has stores a key array and in this case it will determine if it's being pressed or if it's not being pressed so it returns basically true or false so it is indeed if you look here it is a volatile char um it's a char type variable and from what you put in it it will determine to see if that actual char is being pressed um when you press the key like um it will read it from the key buffer and it will check to see if the key press was indeed the key that you specified and you'll learn more about the key buffer in later tutorials but to make it simple the built-in um, array is called key in lowercase letters and in the actual parameters you put the key that you want to check for now you might be saying wow there's so many keys on the keyboard how do I know the different possibilities I can do well I'm not sure about if code blocks has this option but I know in Visual Studio you right click and then click to go to declaration or you can click control F12 now if you go here if you scroll up and down you can see the various a lot of the different options that you can use right so key A would represent the A key on the keyboard key underscore I would represent the I um, key uh, uh, like you could do key F7, F6 or whatever that would represent F6 on the keyboard etc etc right so basically I said that if they pre if they do key as underscore escape note that these have to be in uppercase level uh, letters so if the escape key is pressed then we want to close the window so that's an alternate way to close the window as well so this is calculating for the player the first player and this is calculating for the second player now uh, just let me look at the time okay so I'm saying that if the right key is pressed then we want to move the player um, right according to the move speed that we specified if they click the left arrow key they move towards the left they press the up arrow key they move towards um, the top if they press the down arrow key they move towards the bottom of the screen and same for the player if they press the D key then they move to the right they press the A key they move to the left they press the W key they move to the top if they click the S key they move towards the bottom and if you don't feel like typing this or whatever I should be putting up the source code for this code shortly but I really suggest that you type it out so you get a feel for it so as I mentioned that in the position the first cell represents the player number the second cell represents the coordinate so since we're talking about the first player then all of these will be set to zero since we're talking about the first player now um, the first two are set to zero because we're talking about the X coordinate we want to move when the, when you press right we want the player to move right in the X coordinate and when the person presses the left arrow key we want to move it left according to the X coordinate when the person presses up or down we set this value to 1 because we want to be change we're going to be changing the Y coordinate rather than the X coordinate so we set this to 1 to make it know that we're changing the Y coordinate rather than the X coordinate and the same thing goes for here since we're talking about the second player then all of these are set to 1 and the same thing applies for the X and Y coordinates and it might seem a little confusing now but you will grasp it later on I guarantee just gotta keep on thinking about it in your head and you will get it so uh, you might notice a few differences right here if you haven't noticed and I'll show you right here it says if else if else if and else if and right here I have if else if then if and else if you're probably saying what is the difference well in this case the player will be able to move diagonally and in this case the player will only won't be able to move diagonally it will only be able to move in one direction at a time now why is that well as you know about if and else if statements um, if the first thing isn't true then it checks for the second the second isn't true it checks for the, the next one and the next one and so forth fourth until it can't check it, until there's no else of statements and if you have a final else statement then it will do that right so it's basically saying that if you're not if you if you haven't pressed right then it checks for left 
If you're not pressing left, then it checks for up. If you're not pressing up, then it checks for down. Then if you're pressing down, then it will move down. So it can only move in one direction. Right here, it says if you're clicking right, if you're clicking D, if you're not clicking D, then it'll, it will move. It won't move to the right. But if you are clicking A, then it'll move to the left. That's it for the else, the if and else statements, right? Then it also checks if you're pressing the W key and the S key. So it checks if you're pressing one of these keys, and it also checks if you're pressing one of these keys in the same loop. So you can press up, you can press a horizontal and a vertical button at the same time, and then it will move in um diagonal pattern. Now, um. If you'll notice that it might move a little faster because, uh, based on the move speed and stuff, and you'll get into normalizing and stuff later, but don't worry about it right now. Um, it just basically mo moves faster because you're increasing the move speed in both there, uh, both horizontal and vertical, and therefore it'll increase the overall speed of the box. Um, now when we actually get to drawing the actual text of the screen. Um, for the first where we do word dot c string set it to a, a c type string and for the x coordinate it, um, it says position we're talking about the first player so this is set to zero and we're talking about the x coordinate so this is set to zero for the y where our position is set to zero cause we're talk um, we're talking about the first player and we're talking about the y coordinate so this is set to one and same thing for the second um, word as well it's the same thing we're talking about the second player, so this is set to 1. And we're talking about the X, so this is set to 0. We're talking about the Y, so this is set to 1. And I've set the rest to 20, so it's a more smooth movement. The higher the number, the lower the, the it won't be that smooth. So the lower the, uh, the number, the smoother it is. And I've done clear bitmap to clear the screen so it, you don't see any smudges on the screen. And everything else is the same. Destroy the font. Um, exit allegro and have return zero and end of main at the bottom of your program and if you run your program then you should get something like this so as you can see they're on top of each other because I set them at the same starting position so if I press the up arrow key um, my website goes towards the top of the screen when I press the down arrow key it moves towards the bottom if I click the left arrow key it moves to the left and if I click the right arrow key, it moves towards the right. Now for my brother's YouTube channel, if you click the W um, key, it moves up. If you press the S key, it moves down. If you move the A key, it moves to the left. And if you click the D key, it moves to the right. It might be a little laggy since I'm using the recording software, but it shouldn't be laggy on your computer. Now if I click W and A, it moves diagonally to the left. If I click like W and D, it moves... Oh, sorry. If I click S and D, it'll move diagonally to the right, to the bottom right, and so on and so forth. So, depending on if you want diagonal movement or just straight um, horizontal or vertical movement, would um, you can determine which type you'd want in your game. So, I know you've learned a lot in this tutorial, and you might have to watch it numerous times to grasp it, but you will grasp it. And um, hopefully you'll be prepared for the next tutorial when we're finally going to be talking about graphics. So hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching and bye.